So, usually in my vlogs, I just vlog about my day. This vlog is going to be a little bit different. What's going to make this vlog a little bit different than the others is that in this one, you know at the end of the semester you can rate your professors or do with the course evaluations? Well, this is my rebuttal. But before I begin, look at this amazing sunset. I mean, my camera doesn't know justice. That's just beautiful. I, I need to get here early one of these days and just do a big old time lapse or long time lapse on the sunset. It, the other last week, it was just as amazing. That's what I got to do. So what I'm gonna be doing in this vlog is pulling up my course evaluations that students completed for me last semester and then my Rate My Professor page uh, course evaluations. And I'm going to respond to some of those things that may have been said, whether it be positive or good, or positive or good, positive or negative. I think course evaluations help us, help me, become a better professor. But at the same time, there are things that are said in course evaluations that students want that I just can't give because I have to protect, it is my duty to protect the integrity of my course, the integrity of the degree in which you are trying to earn, and, not, and to make sure that my grades are not inflated. So the first one I'm going to talk about was in my Psychology 3322 Cognitive Psych class last semester. The review was, loved the flipped teaching style and the books were great reads. One time in the semester, we went over a chapter of the brain on, the, on quiz day because he forgot to bring them. I really preferred that going over the reading and discussing it before taking the quiz. It was helpful, not only when taking the quiz, but helping me understand what I read is right how I perceived it. Thank you for the review. I agree. The so the when I first started teaching, I actually made students take the quiz online, which most of my classes they do the quiz online, face-to-face -face cognitive psych class quizzes are face or actually in the classroom. But when I first started teaching, I usually made students take the quiz before actually covering the material in class. Mainly, is my thought process about that was this will force students to actually look at the textbook before coming to class and actually reading the material. For I want to say the for the my entire first year of teaching, that's how I did it. And once I looked at the numbers, it wasn't really the case. I didn't really see any improvement once I switched over to you know doing them afterwards. So. I figure students probably feel more comfortable when taking a quiz after I go over the material in class. So I switched and there wasn't a dramatic improvement of grades, but there was some improvements. And I think it's because A, I went over the material before actually taking a quiz over the material. B, students had time to ask questions about the material if they didn't understand it. And C, comfortability actually improves great because there's less stress. You know, stress hurts our memory. And sometimes when you're under so much stress, like under a, like when you're taking a quiz, your memory you know, malfunctions and you're not able to recall some of the things that you know you do actually know. So I think taking a quiz after I go over the course material is a great improvement on my classes. And so, Thanks for the review. Now, I actually have class in 15 minutes. Let's read one more, but let's go somewhere else, okay? Come on. My keys are right here. See the other side of the door. Mm. 
So another review that was mentioned is in my psychology 3311 biological psychology class online last semester. The review was, professor responds to emails or questions you may have in a timely manner. Although he only had a few things to grade such as discussion responses and papers due to the fact due to the fact that quizzes and exams graded themselves, it took longer than other classes to receive grades. Extra credit was given at a last minute notice, the week of Thanksgiving. At the beginning of the course, it was nice to have the lectures done, but it didn't make sense to have only the lectures for exams one through five ready and made them mandatory to watch before exam and did not have any other lectures ready and done for the other exams. Thank you for the re thank you for the review. Um, so yes, last semester when it came to the video lectures, it was a disaster for my 3311 class from a biological psychology class, and I try to apologize on, on numerous accounts. Um, last semester was the first time that I thought about using my camera in class and outside of class and using it for class projects like my video lectures and I didn't realize that how much time was going to be consumed doing these lectures and my face-to-face -face abnormal psychology class also um, re relied on the video lectures that I did and so with, both, with two classes relying on the abnormal psychology lectures I prioritized them and I know it's a little unfair, but it was either do one or do none, because I didn't have time to do both. I don't know any other professors that do the video lectures and post them online, and hopefully they did help for the first exam. Now, the biological psychology lectures is not canceled. I did switch to a new book though, so when I do start them again, I want to start all over with a clean slate, and use the new book. As for extra credits, yes I did give it out late last semester but I still gave it in enough time for you to complete them and if you, it's extra credit. I didn't have to do it so it was either I put out the extra credits or no extra credit at all. So that's the way I think about extra credit but I did make improvements this semester. Not all of my classes right now have it available but the majority of my classes have an extra credit tab in Blackboard and I have all the extra credit that I am going to give this semester under that tab. I don't intend on adding any more extra credit though, but it's there. If you want to do it, great. If you don't, that's fine too. I did have a few things to grade in that particular course. I had two online classes and two face-to-face -face classes in which I had things to grade. And yes, it did take longer than expected, I mismanaged my time a lot last semester in terms of when to grade and the amount of things that I had to grade. And what happened, we'll see what happened was, um, I assigned discussion questions for every single chapter for my abnormal psych class and in my biological psych class, I combined two chapters into one discussion. And because I took, because I had so many other things to grade, yes, I did slack on grading the discussion questions, and I apologize, but I made an improvement for this semester. This semester, my online classes are using this software called MindTap, in which they actually engage in some of the activities that correspond with the book and the information that's in the book, and so there are absolutely no discussion questions in my online classes this semester. And I hope at the end of the semester I get some reviews on this. Do y'all prefer the MindTap assignments or do you prefer the discussion questions? And depending on how many classes I teach online and your responses, I will make a decision as to continue using MindTap or to go back to discussion questions. So thank you for that review. Another review as I'm walking to my class for my Psychology 33 online class, again, rating is Awesome Professor. Thank you for that review. I appreciate that. Though I will admit that I don't think I was the 
awesome professor that I try to be in my online classes last semester, but I am trying my hardest this semester, even though there's been some hiccups this semester with the MindTap software that I just talked about. It's the first time using it, so it's my first time being exposed to it myself, so I am still learning how to use it. I think I, I, think I pretty much got it down now, so when I do use it again, it's, it's gonna be a lot smoother. For the most part, as soon as I did have problems, there was not that many. I think altogether, out of, let's see, 20, plus 35, plus I think 29, whatever that number is. I think there was only 10 students that actually had issues with MindTap. So, hi. Hey, All right, yourself? Good. Great. Back to the reviews. I, so I think there was only 10 students out of all of those that had actual problems with the MindTap software. And so, I think that's a pretty good success rate. I just realized, I forgot to put on my bow tie before class, so I'm gonna run over here to this restroom and put on this bow tie because I need my mirror. I need it. But I don't know where the restroom's at on this side of the building. Hopefully they're this way. I'm lost. Did I pass them up? I have no idea. I really could have sworn they were in this little bitty hallway right here. I don't know. Here they are. Found them. Yay. All right. Much, much better. Got the bow tie on. Now it's time to get to class. We'll do some more ratings after class. We'll do a couple more after class. And then a couple more on Thursday. And then we'll call it a vlog. And we'll get it to you. We'll get started on playing some psychology Jeopardy. All right, so we got team one, team two, team three, team four, team five. You know, using the word retarded these days has been a very, it's a derogatory room. Because think about it when you, you talk about something that you don't find, that's not real, that you're not really fond of. Oh, that's retarded, man. And that can be very derogatory to those that, that do have disabilities, intelligent disabilities. So let's not use the word retarded. Let's use learning disabled, okay? Let's try not to offend anyone. I know that's probably going into the whole political correctness, but that's the term that is used in psychology, in the DSM. That is the actual term that is used by professionals. Objective test 400. Use this picture such as this to assess the air in conscious minds. Group one. Uh, I can't pronounce it, but is the ink blot? What is the ink blot? Group two. Thematic apperception test. Apperception. There you go. The tap. The thematic apperception test. I just made it home from class and I'm pooped, but it's Tuesday. So that means that the flash is on tonight and the new hit series, Black Lightning. This isn't a plug or anything, but I love those two shows. But before I go and watch those two shows, because they're sitting on my DVR, let's do one more rating. And I just realized I'm not gonna have a DVR come next week. How am I going to record these episodes? I'm changing my cable service. Figure it out later. So this review is from my Psychology 3322 face-to-face -face class, Abnormal Psychology, last semester. And it's a long one, but it's very well thought out and I truly appreciate it. I would definitely take one of his classes again. Not only was he a great instructor, but he was fair overall with coursework. It is impossible to fail this class. As long as I went to class, studied my book, I feel fine. However, this class was run by the students, in which I didn't particularly want to keep hearing throughout the course. 
Basically, it was hard to stay on topic. I didn't feel like making an hour drive just to sit in the classroom at 7 p.m. to hear someone's opinion. I wish it would have been more staying on topic and discussing material from the video lectures slash book in depth. I also would like to say if he committed to doing our lectures over video, I expect to have the material by a certain time so I can study accordingly. As a paying student, I felt very upset when material wasn't posted as scheduled. I don't do halfway finished work, so I don't expect the same from my professors. I do take in consideration the Harvey situation as well as this being his first time teaching the course. I would like to say I am thankful the professor was not naive about the fact. He did give extra credit to make up for the lack of teaching a certain topic thoroughly. I would still highly recommend Professor Vallejo to anyone looking to take a psych course. He's very passionate about what he does and it's noticeable, it's noticeable in his classroom. Thank you for that review. Um, wow, that was a long one. And I had conflicting thoughts on this one. I couldn't tell if it was a good review or a bad review. It, but overall, it was a great review because it included both positive things and negative things. However, I feel that it was slightly more negative because um, it's just the language. And, and it's perfectly fine. That's how we grow as professors is having negative reviews to go off to see how we can improve. You know, I, you know, these one liners, like the one I said before is just said awesome professor. That's great. I'm glad you think that, but why do you think that I, I need to know why so I can continue doing what I'm doing or change what I'm doing. So if you're watching this video and at the end of the semester, when you do course evaluations, please let us know what we did right, what we did wrong, and how you think we can improve. So one of the first things that she said is to stay on topic, or he said, I, I really don't know who this is. However, this class was run by the students in which I didn't particularly want to keep hearing throughout the course. Basically, it was hard to stay on topic. So my abnormal psychology class is a flipped classroom model. And yes, it's the classroom was designed to where you or the students were to say their thoughts on the particular topic and I would respond. The thing is, I did realize after a while and going back and thinking about these things that I didn't really sum up the core of the topic that we were discussing in class. So I'm hoping that I'm that I made the correct changes. I'm I'm trying to sum up what students are saying in the class this semester. So this review helped me tremendously on bettering my classes about staying on topic yes i do go off topic from time to time i do acknowledge that sometimes i'm not going to lie i do it on purpose because it just makes things more fun but i do sometimes need to refrain from going off topic and and today i did that a little bit in class today you know we were supposed to be talking about um the differences between the mental illness and the physiological illness or if there even is a difference and I went off topic a little bit. Sure, it was still within psychology, but I caught myself at one point and I went back to the slideshow and I went back to the topic. So again, this review helped me quite a bit. So thank you for that review. I really appreciate it. Y'all are making me a better professor as I go along. This is my fifth year doing this. I just entered my fifth year teaching and I am still loving this job. I remember in previous jobs by this time I'd be completely burnt out now five years into this job I can't wait to see what's next like seriously I love this job it's the best thing I've ever done in my entire life so and that includes serving in the military but um, serving in the military what was was honorable don't get me wrong but I enjoy this job that much. So, but with all of that being said, these reviews really helped me. I'll do a couple more from the course evaluations. I'll touch base on some of the Rate My Professor stuff later on, uh, either tomorrow on Wednesday or on Thursday, but you're gonna see it right now anyway. So I will see you, yeah.